Hello, welcome to Flory Models. Here we are on Tuesday, the 9th of July, 2019, for a special Q&A show. Very with special. Our, very special, because we are special, clearly. We are. With our very own Mr. Matt Paul. Hello. From PM Models. We are. Yeah, yeah. Been, <laughs> like that, been that out today. It day. is. <laughs> so you made it down late last night. Yes. With a car full, literally, of kids. Chocker. It's a good job you've got a new car. It is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a good job. Yeah, we've got some good stuff. We have got some very good stuff. Yeah. Um, as you might have seen already, it's up on the forum. Obviously, it's on social media in the various bits and pieces. Tonight, 7.30, we've got the live auction. Yeah. So we've got 40 items, and I have to say, they're all really good stuff. I think so. I yeah. think it's actually yeah. really, really good stuff. Yeah, we have got um, some there's, yeah. there's no sort of crap, really. And fillers. Fillers and stuff, yeah. shall we say. So it's all really good stuff. Some of it is reviews, and to be honest, I think there's only about 10 review kits in there. Yeah. Uh, the rest of it's all brand new, sealed. Fantastic stuff. So what we're going to do is set it up the usual way. So... Join in, come into the chat room, place your bid as we go. We're not doing any uh, proxy bidding or any sort of pre-bid, things like that. So it literally just have fun, have a giggle, get yourself a bargain. Usual thing, shipping will be a cost. Obviously, we don't know and we will combine as always. Yes, or you can pick up. Or you can pick up. From if the you, shop that, if you want to come and yeah, visit. Yeah, that's it. If you're planning on paying a visit to the yeah, shop at any no point, problem. then obviously you can pick up from there yeah. and we go from there. So, any news, anything exciting happened? <laughs> yes, actually. We mm. now stock what we're in stock in AMT. Obviously, the Millennium Falcons have been in and out. Yes. Um, we have got one left for anybody who's uh, still after one, and I think there is probably going to be a restock at some point next week. Yeah. Uh, where else did I pick? I went to pick up some stock yesterday. Oh, didn't AMT. I? There we are. Yeah, we've got a little. Uh, there we go. AMT. A little logo yet for it, but yeah. that's just a few. There is going to be a few more added to that, so. But it's something a bit different, isn't it? I think mm -hmm. they're quite nice. Um, yes. Obviously, the paint masks have been put up now from yes. the crafting well. So, so we've got the roundels all up. The roundels are up now. The roundels, yes. Rondels, roundels, whichever you... Well, got, they've spelt it as wrong, so I'm going to have to say roundels now. I always thought they were roundels, as in round? Round, yeah. I never noticed, to be honest. I've just copied and pasted it, like to be rhombus. honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're... they're they're up, so that's 72nd, 48th and 32nd, and yeah. then obviously we're going to have the Russian stars are going to be up there, stars and bars, yeah. uh, German crosses and swastikas, and mm -hmm. uh, there's some other stuff that they've got in the pipeline as well, so it's going to be filtered we in. We will get them so, up But yeah, they, yeah. Will, they will come up, so yeah, yeah and you've done a... Done a bit of a thing bit on them. Thing on them. Yeah, yeah, so no, that's work. all good. And I'm, I'm going to use the US stars for armor. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, on the build I'm doing at the minute, which isn't the Achilles at the. You're um, not. Well, I'm doing it, right. but I've, because of time factors at the minute, I'm, I'm doing a photo build first right. of a very. You'll see it when we mm -hmm. do the Q and A because it's in the box behind me. But I just a well, the cami kit that is old as I am, literally, I didn't realise until I looked at the thing, but it's more of an exercise in using those and using AK paint, mm -hmm. um, and just, just a play really, but I'm going to do that as a photo build, and then hopefully, you know, I mean, I'm going to be saying, I'm going to do a video, yeah, build. and so it's just, got the years. Oh, Jesus, I know, honestly, I know, I know, I do intend to do it on this time at the minute is... Yes. Well, you know, it is what it is, as you know. Mm. You can ever away rather oh quickly. Yes, and then you're definitely. like, because ah. Leslie's gone, my wife has just said, you need to set a day mm -hmm. and use that day. Yes. And do nothing else. Mm -hmm. You know, because you've said, it, uh, what is it, an hour's filming takes yeah, three true. hours or yeah, half an hour takes two hours. So yeah. you've got to factor yeah. that you in. You have it's to double it all into it, minimum so, of a double. You know, uh, something I appreciate. But I've actually, the setup's here, it's just, mm -hmm. it's just doing it. So, yes. Um, but also with the um, sort of project I'm doing, there's going to be some figures with it. Mm -hmm. So I'm just working out what figures are going to go with it and what sort of setting. So I'll say nice. I've took photos, so... Committed now? I am actually committed to doing it, yeah. Fully. If not, I'm not here the last of it, will I? So. <laughs> That's it. But yeah, Absolutely. I'll start with taking photos and stuff, so yeah. Very good. Cool. Anyway, we've been busy this morning. I've done a couple of reviews. So we've done the Klingon... Katinga. Katinga. Is that, is that how you pronounce it? <laughs> Tinga. Tinga. So you have to be Welsh. Um, so that one, that <laughs> you could, one's. You could have that one. Yeah, that one. Uh, so yes, so uh, that is up with you. I uh, will be up with you in the next couple of days. And also, I did that weird. How did you pronounce it? Got to play the thing. I thought I could. It's still on, isn't it? Is it still on there? Oh God, hold on. This is where we. Here we go. It's a. Uh... 
Triebflugel. Sorry to anybody who speaks German. Yes, just mute like that. Um, so we got that up with you, which actually, like we both said, we came off air. Matt was opposite me when yeah. I did the review. Actually, we both like that. It's I actually it's a really, really, yeah. really nice kit. It's yeah. something different, and it's completely, it, you know, it takes what if to a whole new level. Yeah. But it's no different from their tank wheelie. No, that things. ball that tank is that weird, they do, the Russian, that is. the Soviet ball tank. So, hold on, I'll get it. Yeah. It's a bit hard to describe it when you try and tell somebody it's a long arm wiggly Plus thing. it's going to be auctioned, isn't it? <laughs> Plus, I think it will be up for auction tonight. But I think, same, being 135th, that bodes well for a, sort of a diorama or a base. Yeah, Because that's what it's stood upright anyway, so, yeah. you know, it's space-wise, it's quite compact, really. It's doing the height rather than length, isn't it? So, yeah. I don't know, yeah, it's, it's... I mean, the mould is brilliant. Mm. Fully riveted. Yes. No, and actually yeah. cool schemes on it. Yeah, that's what we were saying. It has got and obviously, you can make your own up, because it's... Got schemes on that one. Never existed, did it? Well, they say it completely proper, proper what if. Yeah. So, yeah. But anyway, that is up for review. Yeah. But, uh, up for sale. Uh, that'll be up tonight uh, on the good one. The other big thing is, you brought me a present, which is good, because you sold me last one. Everything. Everything. of yours, really, that you wanted <laughs> it, so true. you've done well with this one. This is it. Unless I'm somebody actually... comes in with a good bit. No, that's they, they don't. I'm, I draw it out. You might remember <laughs> that, um, obviously, uh, back in the day, this was quite a good option, because obviously, originally, this was the fine mould kit. Then Revel brought it out. How much was it? It's like 300 quid to get when it was 275, mm, something like that. Something like that, yeah. So it was a lot of money. Um, and we all got really excited because this no, kit was really hard to get. It was going for yeah. lots of money yeah. years ago. Uh, and Revel brought it out. And to be honest, I bought it and we did the review of it and it's not bad. But then obviously Bandai, in their infinite wisdom, had to go one better with it. Um, so this is for you guys who have ordered one, pre-ordered one with us, is the box it comes in. It comes in its own box yep. within a box mm. and then in the box obviously we do get and to be honest i haven't actually looked in it yet <laughs> the price on it look oh look see 300 pounds <laughs> if you want yeah. um, so yes it is the bandai they call it they call it something perfect great. grade perfect grade yeah perfect grade. so you might remember um a friend of mine in japan got me one well he didn't his missus went in and got me one because they were only allowed one out of the store at a time and uh, so from that point of view, it was great. Apart from it's going to cost me 80 quid to get it back. And then you turned around and said we can get them. So well, it was like, yeah. right, okay. So I sold my one in Japan uh, and got my money back basically on it, luckily. Yeah. And then we get one in. And then we had, oh, it was only a few when it was like four or five we had yeah, in the last time. Yeah, and I can't even remember where we got them from. No, you? no, they just appeared. And I was like, I'll have one. And then all the members said they'll have one. And before you know it, we sold the yeah, lot, gone. including mine. Yeah. So uh, anyway, we got a load more. Seven, wasn't it? Was it seven or eight? Seven. Was seven that we it? had in. Yeah. So I've got one at and last. And there's one left. And there's one left. Anybody wants one? I'm still what? at 270 plus 270 postage. 270 plus so postage. We're saying postage about 20 Postage quid. is 20. It's the cheapest we can do because of the weight and the cost of the kit for the insurance and all the other stuff that goes with it. Is, it is 20 pounds postage. Yes. Because it is a still, massive box. And it does weigh quite a lot. Five kilograms. Yeah, well, it comes in at five. Yeah, five kilograms. Yes. Um, and again, once you get the pricing of the kit, it's, mm -hmm. you know, because if it does go missing, yes, you've got to insure it. You've got to insure it. Yeah. You can't not do it. So that's it. But yeah, so say two ninety all in for that. Mm -hmm. So. And it is. And if you don't know about that kit, what actually Bandai did, they went back through um, all their records of parts they've used because they know a lot of the parts for either Tamiya or Bandai for that, for all the squibblings, yes. you know, all the bits for it. So, and they went back and matched. So when the original, the original studio scrap yeah. built one, they've gone yeah. back. And they've gone back. Tamiya, yeah, that's it. It, it, was, it was Tamiya and apparently stuff. Bandai, which was what the original oh, one was, was made up of. So... They went, Bandai went back and has actually matched the parts Everything. to it. So that's why they call it the perfect grade one, because as much as they could find, and I think they were something like 90%, is original so parts way. that they've managed to back do and put onto it. So that's why they claim that is the finest one you'll ever find anywhere. Unless you because, have original. Unless you have original, yeah. Um, so yeah, so anyway, I will do a review of that next week or week after, something else like that at last. Uh, we can put it next to... The yeah. fine mold one, which would be quite interesting, because the fine mold one, they say, was the one to happy years, it it? and then yeah. you couldn't find them. They went for horrendous money. I saw one once go for five hundred quid on eBay. For the fine mold yeah. one before yeah, Revel then surprised. redid it because you just couldn't get hold of them. But what's the original price on the Bandai? Want that four fifty? Yes. Yeah, it was horrendous. Yeah, it was um, a lot. Because I think the fine mold one was around that to begin mm. with, and bearing in mind that is 
how much older than the Bandai one. Yeah. So if you take into account all the fluctuations and all that, mm-hmm. that is a yeah. was an expensive it kit when it was released. I mean, how old is the Fan Morph one? Is it early? 2000? No, it's a bit late. Is it late? I don't know. I think it is. It's either 2000. It might be actually late 90s. I think they started coming out with those uh, and doing them all. And then Bandai obviously lost the franchise. Fine Mold. Fine Mold, sorry. Yeah. Lost the franchise. Yeah. And then obviously Bandai. Because they did the TIE Fighter in the X-Wing. X-Wing which is obviously which, redone. I've got them over there. there redone by Revel. Or is that all they managed to do then? Yeah. And they brought out the just, wing just or anything the, else. No, it was just, just those. Else. And yeah. then obviously Bandai's taking it over. Yeah. So I'm hoping, or we're hoping, that now Revel are, mm. are doing these or importing them, whatever, what deal they've got, that actually we'll get some more of the Star Wars mm. stuff. Because nice. it's funny, because it be nice. a lot of people have mentioned, is it is it like a Revel re-box? No. It's not even that. It's, it's got a sticker on it. Yeah, it's, it's just should, got a yeah. sticker that says Revel. It's actually a Bandai exactly the same. Because yeah. we've got, I've got all the Bandai over there. Yeah. And obviously we carry, we the, carry all the, the usual ones as well. The ones we can get, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, from that point of view, if you're wondering about it, it yeah. is a Bandai kit with yeah. a Revel sticker. <laughs> it's That's what yeah. it is. Which is great, because as we know, we have real trouble, including us, trying to get the kits out of Japan. Yes. You don't like exporting it, we'll get told. Them. No, but again, you've got the thing with the licensing with Disney and all that, it's, they've got to be careful, haven't they? So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's nice that they're filtering through at long last and the big mm. well, the good kits you've built how many they can see in your cabinet. So, yeah, yes. yeah, let's hope they carry on with it. Mm. Be nice if they did. Cool. Yeah. Right, okay, obviously, being um, Tuesday, it is the QA time, and I've lost my thing now. Hold on, where were we? Uh, so, going back where we were last week, I've got to remember where we were now. Uh, right, okay, Paul says, please can you remind me where Steve's Hellcat is? It's in a different dimension. It's, you would think. <laughs> okay, so, literally, okay, um, let me open a new tab and we'll just go into the forum because otherwise I'll lose where we were before. Okay, from the forum, you're just in here. Easiest way, just go to Steve's area here, and if you really want to shortcut everything, just click on videos, okay? And then you click there. I can't understand why no one can find it. And perhaps as you're looking in here, but don't forget, Steve's got an ongoing thread where people are talking about it. Just click back to the beginning, and there is Steve with a patch. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) Pirate Steve. Pirate Steve, and there we go. You can see he's got up here part four, I think we're up to. Yeah, part four. Of the actual Hellcat oh, build. Yeah. It's right there. I can't understand why everyone's saying they can't find it. It's not... Perhaps because when you click on the vid and then it's all mm. the chat before you Yeah, actually... perhaps it's the chat. But don't forget, Steve puts his like I do, just the same way I do mine as well, yeah. just in here. So that's how you actually get to it. And it's right there. And you can just click and play his videos like that. You're like done by Thursday, are you? I would have thought so. Yeah, I think, you know, as long as that. I think <laughs> tomorrow, really. And then just a day to paint and weather. Easy. Piece of cake. I can't, <laughs> can't see what it's, it's really. So it'd be a piece of cake with that. Yeah. But anyway, that's it. It's literally as simple as that. It's not complicated. And don't forget, the search does work, strangely. So, uh, but it actually does. So if you want to find things, you can just find them up in there uh, and you'll be good to go. But that's the easiest way to do it. Just click, Steve, video, boom. So you put Elka in there, will it come up? Yeah, but it does come up with all the other Hellcats. No, I know. But, done, but it will come up in the search as well. We did that with the other Steve's side. Um, that uh, work or not? not particularly no, well because okay. obviously every other Steve who's mentioned about Hellcat comes yeah good well. point yeah yeah. Um, yeah. so yes okay. cool right okay where were we so um, Harvey, are we on? Uh, Steve's one there so Harvey yeah Harvey. he says hi Phil uh, Tannery recently brought out another rebox of the old Esky Mirage F1 they've had some mileage out of that over the years and it, just... uh, <laughs> it claims to have upgraded moulds it does it does indeed and I still I don't know what, what is upgraded. Now, I think the original was race panel lines. Right. Excuse me. Um, so, I've actually had a look at the sprue shots. I'm thinking, well, sometimes I know they've upgraded before and yeah. they've recessed, but mm-hmm. normally it says on the box because you're, you've moved it. I have. The, see, yeah, the Hercules, yeah. it says recessed on the box. And I've had some more. And then other ones, um, they've redone the cockpit. Mm-hmm. And... But this, I can't, can't I really don't know bit. what's been upgraded. Mm. And I was actually talking to Bryn about it. Mm. He says, oh, you know, seeing this and blah, blah, blah. And he says, you've upgraded moulds. You know, and he don't know either. Right. Because he's actually built one right. not long ago. Yeah. So I'm not 100%. You'd think they'd actually say, say wouldn't it, yeah, on the description, you, yeah. one upgraded, it's like, oh, it's now recessed or it's raised yeah. or it's put cockpit in it or mm-hmm. whatever they've done. Yeah. 
I don't know, perhaps they've just cleaned the moulds up. Which wouldn't be surprised because bearing in mind it's a kit from the 80s, is yeah, it? It's maybe, an old SD yeah, kit, isn't it? Is SD, yeah. So it could just be that they've cleaned the moulds up. Yeah. I don't know. Pop. Sorry. Um, okay. If somebody does, can they pipe up? Because I, I want to know. Yeah, we'd like honest. to know that as well. So please pipe up in the yeah. chat below. Uh, the thing is, uh, we're talking about other companies. Well, really, your other options, Kitty Hawk. Yes. Kitty which, Hawk, do it. And that's it. And that's it. That's your lot. That is it. Nobody yes. else does one. So I would go to the Kitty Hawk one. If honest, it's. Yeah, I've reviewed you know, the Kitty Hawk one. The Kitty Hawk yeah. one, it, again, it's modular yeah. because two seat versus single seat yeah. and various things, so they've taken advantage of that. Um, but yeah, the Kitty Hawk one isn't bad. It's on the par, I'd say, with the Jaguar. It's very, very similar. They came out at the same time, if yeah, I remember they, rightly. Yeah. So, you know, you've got the usual sort of fit issues. If you want to close it up, for instance, it might be a bit iffy. Mm. But if you're doing it all open and showing, you're okay. But, you know, again, you've got that thing. The, the Esky, we're saying Italian, it's Esky. Kits are very basic. Very. Very, not very. Not cockpit. Yeah, you hardly get no, it. It's usually decals, wells. isn't it, for cockpits? Yeah, they're and, very flat. Yeah, and there's nothing really in it. I, I yeah. think you're in that scenario with, like, the 48th Jag. Yes, yeah. You, you know, all right, it's kitty. You, you know you're going to have work, but you're going to get a lot of detailed, a lot kit, detailed kit rather than yeah. having to chuck a load of aftermarket yes. to upgrade yeah, that one. You know, if somebody you said know. to me tomorrow you need to build one, I would just go straight for the Kitty Hawk one. Yeah, as just... much as I might rip Kitty Hawk, but again, I think to detail up, yeah, it's a lot easier to have it there, yeah, and have problems than it would be to go around doing all your details. Well, I'd say resin cockpits, yeah, wheels, and wheels, and I mean, stuff enough for it, but yeah. Oh yes. Uh, right, okay, the guys that are talking about that, we don't need to talk about that one. Um, we've got Alex, and I can show, he's put up a very nice picture, a very nice clean workout with his new caddy. Very cool. So very cool down in there. Oh, look, uh, he's got some extra thin quick set, look. Yeah, As yeah. As rear as X28, that. Is it? He's still got <laughs> some is. left over. He gets bonus points for clearly having an old bottle of wash there, looks like an old grey, sat in the corner going lonely, <laughs> <laughs> things like that. It's a bit where we but he's got the sander, so he's got the old sander as well, look. And the good one. So yes, nice little setup there. Congratulations. And uh, right, next page. Uh, right, Chris. Now, um, to be honest with you, we've just yes. sort of looked at this, and this is I smell it's just a rat. Bullshit. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's it is. So anyway, Chris is saying hi, Phil. Have you seen on eBay? Thought you the gang could have a giggle over it. They're currently for sale through eBay. Uh, on behalf of the current owner by National Heritage Sales. <laughs> Even that just doesn't make any sense. Anyway, yeah. he saw the uh, they auction. Uh, he saw an auction at the Battle of Jutland. Uh, I thought uh, thought these were all surrendered at the end of the war and sunk by their crews in Scapa Flow, uh, and not considered war graves. Some of the guns from these ships. Uh, are the ones of the main source for non-radioactive, high-grade uh, steel used for making Geiger counters. Uh, the radiation-sensitive medical equipment. Uh, the sales will need final approval by the MOD and, be, uh, and will end before the show ends. Right. So, and this is it, this is the thing. But when you click on the little linky thing here to go <laughs> to it, this company was set up on the 8th of June 2019, apparently. So a month ago. So it was a month ago. Give or take. Uh, and they've got no sales, no nothing whatsoever, and all the rest of it. So, personally, what? we're just thinking it's solid crap. Do you think we'll get out if we buy it through the Royal Mail? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it. Can they ship it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yes. But anyway, there's the various things to it down oh, on there. It is. Okay, Keith says, Hi Phil, uh, for black and grey cockpits I've seen you use XF19 dry brushing. Uh, I'll use that uh, on the black parts, X19, uh, and in my 148 scale Mosquito uh, for the group build. Um, but should I use XF71 green as well? Right, well the cockpit inside a Mosquito green. is green, XF71 yeah. would do it, because yeah. that's internal RAF green. Yeah. Um, uh, so yes, yeah. also uh, use your favourite two one four dark iron, which is it's that good. I keep it in front of me. Yeah, <laughs> which is the buffable stuff, yeah. the gun stuff, the mess, uh, Mr. Metal colours. Um, uh, I'll be doing this to dry brush effect uh, with foam uh, the deck with the brown to give a mud effect, or should I use oils? 
Okay, so if you're doing sort of mud effects and stuff like that, if you're doing it in a cockpit, especially, I take it you're doing a 48 scale, you are a 48 scale mosquito, it's very, very small. So if you're doing mud in there, I don't think it would have that much in the way of mud anyway. Uh, it would just be your normal grime, probably just an oil thin These wash. Yours is up there, you're not going to see a lot in it either, no, are you? That's it. No, that's No, it's you can't see much going in, in there. Yes. So, I, again, it, it's one of those ones where on the 32nd one you've got a bit more room, and obviously if you do 24 scale you can really see into it, <laughs> but in 48 you're not going to see much going on there. I'd definitely use an oil wash. Yeah, just a little thin oil wash, a little yeah. bit of brown in there, just dab, dab, it, around. dab it around. Yeah. And, and, yeah. Um, I watched these Hellcat build and he uses oils. I'm thinking uh, foam, some brown uh, with filler to enhance with the oils and stuff. Again, I don't think you need it to be lumpy. I can't imagine them getting much mud, proper mud inside the cockpit. They probably bang their boots before they get in. Yeah, probably. Uh, for the best weathering. Personally, I think if you wanted to go for that sort of more weathered look like that, use the brown wash. The clay wash because that will act exactly in scale yeah. for it but personally i think i would just use oil brown oil wash mixed obviously thinned with a little bit of enamel thinners and then just dabbing it around and as it dries off re-dab it and you'll uh, get that sort of warm just stuff just for your thing sorry just read the bottom uh, it's kind of makes sense now okay i'm hoping at. to do this build uh, with removable canopy like your pr blue yes okay so you can see the so carpet down in there right. yeah um i would I still do it the that. same way yes I, I would literally go in there thin the trouble brown. is Keith from what I would say is it's going to be if you're going to start weathering and less is going to be more yes because of the scale definitely so my two cents would be mm -hmm. oils yes. I would because you could just dab a little bit around yeah, not it. overdo it mm. and then and then just sort of filter it to where you want to it really so want so you're not yeah because like i say it is an aircraft and not sort of inside of a tank no no that's right sort of thing there was a bit more or cleaner. A vehicle or whatever so yeah yeah you then goes on to say the filter wash uh, for the cockpit using abtai lung um uh, 502 smoke odorless terps ironically i bought the aircraft set with the yellow and uh, with the various colors into it uh not really colors i'd call aircraft colors okay there's a thing to that because i got it you mean like this one which has got weirdo colors into it like green yellow and blue yeah, but, but don't forget these are yeah but also these are designed for basically like filtering so you could use things like the blue will enhance uh, things like the greens will be enhanced with yellows uh, and you've got your various things. That's what they're designed for. The yellow you mix with over greens yeah. and it gives it that nice yeah. area. The blue you yeah. can put over yellows as well and it, it changes the colors with it and your greens and so on. So that's really what they're designed for doing. It might seem funny like you're saying that it's got dark greens and various things, but don't forget you're using them either slightly thinned or you can use them for things. They actually do say it on here sometimes, faded green. Sometimes they actually say for what it is for. Uh, that's for just the yellows and look, yeah, faded navy blue. So basically what you can do is, uh, and I've shown it before, if you go back and have a look at the Mosquito, um, not Mosquito, Tempest, Hawker Tempest build, I use these right the way through. Also the other good one, and you've got it up in the unit, is the FW190. Yes. Did it all over the FW190 using these said paints. Um, and again, like things are like on the yellow, you're just putting on a smudge of it and then blending. And it's all yes. blending work. And it, it uh, breaks it up. A little goes a, it does a, go a long, very long, long way. way. To be honest, the thing I've got behind me in the box mm -hmm. is weathered with oils. It's literally right. it's all pretty much weathered with oils. Even though it's a tank, but yeah. it's the same thing. And I've done the same. And if you get it out and have a look, you'll see. Mm. But I love oils. I'm, I'm such yeah. a convert to oils now. I must admit, I am as well. You know, it, they're so versatile. Mm. Yes. You know, you can, like you say, you can do your fading with them, you can make washes with them, you yeah. can literally paint with them. Yes. Once you've leached the oil out, they're just yeah. brilliant. I and think these as well. They are, post shading um, with an yeah. airbrush, I don't bother with I anymore. I don't know more. Because I, I literally brush. use, yeah, and that's it. I just put a Smalled, spot on yeah, and you just you. blend it yeah. around. You can do panel yeah. lines yeah. with it. The bear, all of the yeah. post shading on the bear with yeah. that metal is done with. You well, know, again, I use it on arm and around rivets and stuff. Yeah. You know, you put a pin wash, yeah. and it will. Yeah. To be honest, this is somebody else's technique, but I've, I've mm -hmm. kind of adopted it. Just use a bit of oil and literally paint. You've mm -hmm. got no cleanup and let it dry. Yeah, I mean, it's, it. it's, 
it's time saving as well along with it because a lot of it you know like say you put a wash on yeah let it dry then you've got to clean it all yeah, up yeah, and oils yeah. are just a lot neater yes and I think also the thing is, is that like a lot of people say to me, why don't I use my uh, clay wash and I use oils? The great thing with oils is, is you don't get that pigment and the tide. Yeah, you know, you get those is, tide yeah. marks. If you let it dry yeah. and you get like a tide mark as it, it, it's coming off. With oils, you don't get that. Or if you do, you just give a light rub and it just blends it. And that's it the nice yeah, thing. It, it's it, akin yeah. to using makeup, really, at it, the end of the day. Yeah. It, you know, you're putting on your yeah. face, on your aircraft, as they say. Uh, and that's the nice thing about it. But I think with oils as well is that people worry about using oils because what if it goes wrong? But you just wipe it off with thinners and start yeah. again. You can, especially yeah, if you've got a clear coat down, you know, to seal it. But it is foolproof. I wouldn't worry about these. And I know we spoke about it before. 502s aren't cheap, but they just last forever. You know? Yeah, because you don't need a lot. And we're struggling because, to be honest with you, PM is trying to get these I, at the I moment. Am, I am going to get them. Because we want by them. By crook, yes. I will be stuck in yeah. at Teal Lung oil paints yeah one yeah. way or another because i rate them I, I mean i use them all the time now and you start right, to you use, use them the and time, stuff yeah. and it's yeah. um yeah yeah why you can't get them i don't know so it does seem a little bit odd but honestly these colors that you see in here don't forget is that they're designed not don't think of them as blue and yellow. It's designed for things like, you know, I use the yellow a lot to fade orange, uh, to fade orange, to fade green. So yeah. you just put a tiny spot on it and then blend it and mm. you'll notice it lightens the green without making it yeah. go creamy or to fade it sort of fades it naturally yeah, yeah. without lightening it almost that's the biggest yeah, difference white, white no. just bleach it and then because the thing is it, if you come like... back and you post shade it normally you've got a lightened color but yeah. this actually just it just looks right it uh, does and it's it stopped yeah. it desaturates no, it, it. it and the yeah. saturated and desaturated well, it just hmm. you know it does make a hell of a difference because yes. if you do it with the wrong colour, mm -hmm. you'll just kill that it, shade, kill shade off, or yeah. tone that yeah. you want where you want it quite vibrant. Mm -hmm. So, um, Go on and yeah, get it out. So have get a look. It's still, I've repainted it to be honest. It's an old kit right. that I've had in a box. Yeah, I'll show it you. You can have it. All right, okay, hold on. Let me do a uh, change of camera angle here. Um, hold on, we've got to do that and then we'll go like. Uh, that we wanted to try some new techniques and mainly that's all oil so the even the scratching yeah and chipping which i don't want to overdo is all done with oils and the rust mm -hmm. so you know i didn't want it to look like it's been in a junkyard yes but i wanted to look like a bit worn mm -hmm. Ooh, they, they're not it's all right they're it's not stuck right. on the two weapons the yeah i think you'll fall off with mp40 as well that's but, all yeah. Right. but yeah very nice so, how do you do your mud inside that is actually that is pigment, mm -hmm. but it was kind of lathered in pigments and it ended up I didn't like it. Mm. So I got a brush and just, just, and just wiped it, it all yeah, off yeah. and it's ended up a lot better than, mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, it's nice that. Very nice. But as I say, it's nice and subtle, like your streaking and your various things. It's not in your face, as yeah. say, like it's been in a junkyard. It's in yard. scale. That's yes, what I was trying to keep scale. it because I think sometimes it can look over scale. Yeah. Um, I think even the chain's done with oils, to be honest, it started mm -hmm. off with, I think there might be a few yeah. brassy bits on it, but it is literally yeah. dip, dipped in an oil wash, I think it was, to stain mm -hmm. it and then rusty, you know. Yeah, it's so, but it definitely I works. It, you know, but yeah. Very nice. So, I'm going to pick these up there. Sausage really, fingers. Yeah, that's what I should have stuck them on, really. Yeah. Get some super glue. Very nice. So, yes. But cool build. What kit? Tamiya. Tamiya. Just, yeah, so one from the archives and it was just uh whatever got repainted and also wanted to try sort of it chipping with the chair yeah so and that's just flat tammy white and then i fingered it voils again you know the wood grain yeah it's yeah. just bits of oils just to mm -hmm. brighten it up so yeah I'm quite pleased with it to be honest again i think that's the thing with oils is that you know they just bring out detail but they bring out the finest details uh, and yeah. like wood grain uh, and like you know in your weathering it's more of a subtle effect yeah. than heavy duty yeah. chipping or you know big gouges and chunks out of it it's that subtleness which breaks things up and gives things a better scale and that's yeah. why I must admit I am complete convert to oils now and I use yeah. them all the time pretty yeah. much everything we do yeah, I am, to be so, right, okay, cool. <laughs> uh, Ben says, hi Phil, uh, will you be attending the Western Supermare model show this Sunday uh, at the Helicopter Museum? If so, um, me and a friend will be displaying our kits there. Be good to see us. We are. We will be here. You're making a long trip down? Day yes, trip me, out? Andy, and possibly Rob. Yes. 
I'll, um, I'll come in down. Like I said, we're not trading, we're just coming for a jolly, aren't we? Yeah, we're going there for a jolly. So, um, so that will all be good. So we'll be hanging around the museum during the day. So please come yeah. and say hello and we'll come and see you if you're displaying. Yeah, looking forward to it. So yeah, we are looking forward it's to it actually. A couple of years. It's been a couple of years. Last time I was up there, it was bloody hot. And it looks like it's going to be, and it's gonna be bloody the hot this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, but no, we'll be there. No problem at all. Yeah. Okay, Keith again. He even says that. Me again. I love the Hellcat review and totally absorbed with Steve's build. Uh, ashamed to say, as an Englishman, I totally refuse to build an Airfix kit again. Looking at a review at the Hellcat, I'm hoping uh, they've made a kit that I can make out of the box and it'll be nice, excellent. To be honest, very, very hard to fault the kit. Mm. It, that was the thing. It was one of those ones where I went in eyes wide open right? because I'd already sort of made my mind up right. and then I saw it and you're like, actually, yeah. It, it's one of those ones where it's a very difficult kit to see because of the, I think most of the colour schemes you've seen it and are just blue. Yes. So it's hard to see the details and the nicer things. And you can't over-weather it because it will look horrible. So it is what it is. And mm. that's the trouble. If it had been in like a metal finish or a camo, yeah. you can see a lot more of what's going yeah. on. But when it's just solid dark blue, it's very difficult to see what's going on with the actual kit. My initial thing was, though, is that it just looked like it was that horrible soft plastic that Airfix used the, you know, from the far yeah. east. And you've got the thing of sink marks and all of that. But actually... There is a few sink marks in there, but not many. The ejector pins are pretty much flush, right. so that's easy to deal with. And the uh, sprue gates are tiny compared to the Spitfire, which I was mm -hmm. kicking off about yesterday. Yeah. Um, so, you know, again, it was one of those you come away. My only thing to it was, the more I was looking at this sort of stressed skin, which is now become the sort of trademark of Airfix, it did look a little bit like a patchwork quilt. Because it's got that texture, and I was thinking, is it is overdone it very, now? Is it very uniform? It's pretty uniform, but it then random? it is. No, 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 it's pretty much every area's got it, but it is that thing, I think. By the time you get into paint, it knocks it back. Yeah. But when you look at it in the plastic, yeah. Yeah, it, it yeah. shows it. And because it's that typical Airfix gritty graininess to the plastic they use, um, it sort of stood out. And it was that thing, after I've been reviewing it, and I'm looking at it for half hour, I'm thinking, it looks very overdone. It looks very much. But I think when I've seen pictures of it, and in live, because I've seen the thing yeah. up as well, um, it seems, yeah, Paramjit's Paramjit one is beautiful. Yes. Yeah, it's yes, amazing. It? Um, but it, it and probably it, comes together. It comes but it together. probably looks worse in beer plastic yeah. than it would when it's in paint. The thing is, though, is on the flip side, if they hadn't have done it, mm. How would it look without it? Oh, that's it. It looked like a right brick. It looked so, like a toy, you know? Yeah. So it needs it. I think in that scale, you need to have it. And certainly it paid off. First time they did it properly, it was obviously on the Typhoon, the Hawk Typhoon, and that looks great with it. Yeah. And it doesn't look like it's in your face. Yeah. Um, that's a little bit more random on that one. They haven't done it on every one, but obviously we're assuming they've got it right, and the Hellcat is like oh, that, the way it's no riveted together. I've never seen one, so I couldn't tell you, but yeah. <laughs> You'd hope so. Cause I think they did, to be fair to it, if it's to do with the research, yeah, now, that's a yeah. big part of their, yeah, their, their set up now, isn't it, of the research and all that. So, yeah, I'd, I'd give them the benefit but, of the so, doubt with that and think they've yeah. done homework. Yeah. So. But if you haven't seen yesterday's show, I had a mini rant uh, about, I know you haven't seen it yet because you were driving down oh, here yeah, at the time, <laughs> uh, but I did have a mini rant about how comes then they can make the Hellcat yeah. And the sprue gates are tiny, yeah. and they're right, you know, as it should be. And yet, you look at that Spitfire they did, the Kit Kat Spitfire, as I call it, and it's like chewed up bubble gum. The sprue gates are massive; they're bigger than the ones on the Hellcat, and it's almost like the two separate companies. Almost, it's yeah, like premium range budget. Yeah, we did you know? discuss this, didn't we? Last so, night, really, a little I bit, think that's. So. The thing with it, I, you can only hope that Airfix will take everything they've learned from the Hellcat and yeah. then it filters down. The way I look at it, though, that, that's a £20 kit. Yeah, and that's the other thing as well. You know Are we talking mean, it's a budget kit? 120 quid. 20 quid. Oh, so there is a big... I know, obviously, the different scales and stuff, but detail-wise, there's a... Hmm. It probably is. I it's a that, premium that. You, kit. The Hellcat, I would say, is a premium From build. a business point of view, uh, Tech Airfix or any of the other manufacturers, they're hmm. going to have a budget. Yes. And they're going to pick the subjects that they're going to do and go, right, you've got that amount to spend on that kit mm -hmm. and that amount to spend on that kit. Yes. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. Presume that's how it must work. Oh, I assume so. So, yeah. uh, and every manufacturer must have the same sort of thing. Is like how much we're gonna mm -hmm. put into this to get back. You yeah. know what I mean? They're gonna make money, aren't they? So yeah. I don't know. Just my theory on it, I suppose. Because uh, he says only 110 pennies is a lot to spend. Uh, is it worth it, or can I hold my head high as an English uh, kit builder? 
Uh, I know uh, for 110 with the amount of plastic it won't be uh, a triple A Tamiya but is it a good build? Again is it not though? I think it's lovely really I as I say looking at it as I say I wouldn't call it Tamiya because like I said in the end of the review the trouble is you look at a Tamiya 30 second scale kit mm. 0.7 millimeter mm. Uh, thickness for the panels for the cowling area things like that on the Mustang and the Spitfire it would have been nice if Airfix could do something similar little magnets to hold them on perhaps um, obviously uh, I know we were I, somebody's already mentioned this to me uh, in one of the feedback from this one and I said it's a shame it's got you know it's fixed it's either wings up wings down because you have to cut lumps off to make it happen right. um, and I said that it probably cost a fortune to make it where you could have both yes you know that would have been yeah. uh, it, it adds to the, the cost of it and all the rest of it and they were saying about well why couldn't they just have like a plug-in wing section you know with a fold so you can just slot the wings and you could have it open or folded and you know very much like um tamia did with the gear systems yeah. and stuff like that mm. and yeah i think yes they could do but then like we we're saying because of the size of the kit if you've got a tool something like that Mm. It's going to add into that thing. And now we're talking 150 quid kit. Yeah. You know, and then you'll get into the realms of, you know, pricing a lot of models out. And that's the trouble. Yeah. Airfix are doing it to a budget. And yeah. I, I still think for 110 quid or 120 quid for retail, it's a lot that's of plastic. A, that is a, yeah, it's, it's a lot. It's going to keep you occupied yeah. for, for a good month or, you mm. know. Yeah. No, definitely. Because, I mean, I think you're right there. If you put a comparison with if Tamiya did that, mm. even in 132nd. Yeah. You're going to be looking at the same price in one thirty second because yes. that's where the Spitfires are at now. The Mustangs up there with that. Yeah. Obviously, what's is the Mozzie up to about one seventy now? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So over 150, you know. Yeah. yeah. So yes. Yeah. It will be interesting to see if Tamiya in the future brought that kit out in thirty second, yeah. um, because and see what they do with it. Well, I think you'd be looking at 140 at least it. because it's bigger than the Spitfire. And I think what was the the bubble top which marks that? I never know, 616? 16, the late one, I think yeah. they're 130. Yeah. I think the Mark 9 is a cheaper one, but that's not cheap anymore. No. And then obviously it goes up. Yeah. 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 Anyway, so he's seen the problems with the plastic warping and bending, uh, but the basic uh, resolving is something you encounter with the AAA manufacturers. CA glue and F clamps is not a problem. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's a kit. You've got to put it together, you know. So you are going to get little things, even on that. And even on the AAA things, you know, it takes a little bit sometimes of, you know, where you're going to clamp it, where you're going to put it together, just to hold it whilst it goes yeah. together in the various yeah. things like it. And when you're dealing in, it's a softer plastic, I think you're always going to have warpage issues, but that's the nice thing. Because it's a soft plastic, it's easy to put it back in. Yeah. You can just, you know, bend it in, yeah. glue it. And once it's glued, it is the correct shape. You've got formers, obviously, inside of the Hellcat. It's going to keep it straight. It's not going to go like a banana because there's nothing holding it together. It will be straight when it's all together. So not a problem well, with that all, one. All the ones we've seen built will look at time, don't they? Mm, so absolutely, obviously it does yeah. come together and looks... And you not, know, nobody's, yeah. moaned that nobody's moaned about it going together. Yeah. And, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So then he goes on about that. I think we've really covered that one yeah. pretty much there, Keith. Uh, ben says, hi Phil, uh, what is the best way to transbuilt your built models? D -d -d Funny you say D that. Well. Hold on, I'll change my camera angle, there we go. Uh, hold on. Well, I've done it, you're okay now, you're in. Hold me in, Emma. There you in. go. That's Grab how yourself does it. one of those, and a lot of cocktail sticks. And a piece of foam. And a piece of foam, so that. I'll grab it, obviously I've put a box in there because I'm running out of room in the car. Mm -hmm. But literally, planes and all sorts, so I'll take that out because I'm going to damage something. Yes. But literally, it's the easiest way to do it. So you put your kit, whatever you've got, make sure obviously you've got the right box, and then basically you just pin it in to stop it sliding left and right and backwards and forwards and you know. So tanks are quite straightforward. Plates yeah. can be a little bit more, but cocktail hmm. sticks and that's basically it. Time. There you go. Have to angle it towards the camera a bit. So yeah. So, it's in there that's just basically like that. how we all do it. Yes. You know, if you're doing the shows and 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So when we do, you tell me and I'll... Yeah, that's it. Well, we'll work it out for the end of this month. Beginning of or beginning of next August. month. Yeah, we'll, we'll I'll work. come up and we'll do another open house airbrushing thing. But this time we'll make it a little bit more uh, regimented. Um, so we'll talk and make our way through sort of basic or medium airbrushing for a couple of hours. So if you want to come along and join us for that and then yeah, grab a seat and what well. we'll do is we'll shout up we who's coming and what we can do and we'll get it a little bit more yeah. yeah and i'll do a proper course free just come along sit in um you know join yeah. in with it and all the rest of it and then what we'll do is we'll record it as well yeah uh, and we'll put it up on the site yes, and we'll put a camera over the top it. for yeah, the guys who can't make it yeah uh, and we'll do a proper uh, live airbrushing and then obviously the guys who are there can come and have a go and all the bits and pieces like we did last time yes be and point. hopefully after that we are going to try and do the proper courses yes well, not just the courses we were saying no when we do the open oh, yeah, days at yeah. the shop we're going yeah. to try and have people come yes and do different sort of cl classes yeah, whatever, workshops, yeah, workshops wherever you so want to say workshops gonna call them, and that's so what we're going to try and get people to come and hmm. and hopefully they'll come and do it so when you come you're not just coming you know you, yeah, you, you get to see a bit of something ask some questions and mm -hmm. yeah I think that'd be, yeah, that'd and we can go through the tips and tricks of how we do things yeah exactly good Definitely. So, yes. Okay, Paul says, uh, Airfix Meteor build. Uh, in the build, uh, you mentioned plastic hard strips to replace the raised strip over the spine of the fuselage. Can you share a bit of light on the product in question, please? Now, the trouble is, Matt's got the kit up with him, and I can't remember what I did. So, uh, I'm assuming it would have been going down the scratch building area. And to be honest with you, is this the multi-pack? No, it's just the thin one. Um, I tend to use styrene sheet, and to be honest, this is just the thin one, but I usually buy the multi-pack. So in that, you actually get a thick, I think it's like one mil, there's a 0.7 mil, a 0.5 mil, or two mil, and yeah. this is stupidly thin, 0 0.005 mil, whatever it is. This is obviously like paper, this one. Um, but yeah, uh, and you can get it in various, yeah, it's got them all down on the back. So you can grab that a pack of that. It's probably, I would say, a must for most modelers. Even if you just get a multi-pack, that way you've covered yourself at any tiny little jobs you're doing. So where's the meteor got then? Bands? I, I think it, I can't remember now. I know That's Mozzie a, has, yeah. isn't it? Because you yeah. always seem to, I bet that one has, and Mozzie's got the band. And it's, Perhaps he is mentioning it, because I think I might have done that to the Mozzie. I might have replaced it, because I sanded it off during doing the filler job. So I think I might have put it back in. Uh, but the, my mozzie, I think... I have got the meteor rent up at the shop. Yeah, you got the meteor at the shop, but I just can't remember which bit it is. It says, uh, replace the raised strip over the spine uh, of the fuselage. Perhaps he means mosquito, because the mosquito's got one behind the cockpit, isn't it? Yeah, it's got yeah, that, band. that band. It's the strengthening, like strengthening band. band. Yeah, and it and goes you always right have to sand it off. You always sand it off to, to do get the, the join. Yeah. yeah. Perhaps he means mm -hmm. that. And if that was the case, yeah, it would have been just a piece of this. So literally using a bit of styrene sheet, and then you cut it down, you get the thickness ones, they do bend. Uh, it goes to that. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, that's probably, the, the, to be honest, the easiest way of doing it, and that's what I tend to do. If I get any detail uh, on like rays with bands and stuff like that, if I remember right, I've done it on tails of things as well before, you just cut styrene sheet, you put it down, a couple of drops of glue, hold it in place, so yeah, weld action, it will then soften it and hold it I'm all in place, say, all in one. Plastic card loves. Yeah, extra, extra thin, thin. stuff, doesn't it? It yes. just rips and it is good stuff. So that's personally what I would do with that one. It's good stuff on that. Okay, right. And da, 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 posting pictures. Um, so yes, about posting pictures. I've done videos on this before uh, and all the rest of it. I can give you a quick uh, demo y type thing here. Um, so basically, what we, we can do is if you just go on reply and then you click here. Okay, and then you can upload. So you can browse, obviously, photos to upload, or you can grab an address. Okay, so if we go browse, and I've got ones in here. So, for instance, if we grab this, I don't know whose this is. Okay, and you just pop it in. It's literally that simple. Now, the only drawback is it has to be like 800 by 800. Once it's in there, press return, and then post, and it will post it up in there just like that. Okay, if it's a bigger photo, if I go browse and we try and find something that's huge, I'm just wondering, uh, do, 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 uh, where are we? Pictures, oh, go, go. to be honest, this is not the right computer for this because uh, I don't have pictures in here, uh, particularly, uh, where are we? Oh, off Google. <laughs> well, think, hold on, sorry, hold on. Here we go, so if we go Skyhawk, okay. And then if it is a too big a picture, 
and we go okay so the prances are that's too big now it might be behind here saying it's too big okay so if that is the case the easiest way to do this one is let's go browse again okay so if it's doing that and it's not showing it the photo is literally too big all right so if you just go down in here okay you right click on your picture and then you go open with and if you use i don't know what is it paint or paint 3d one or the other is it photos one of these i can't remember <laughs> what it is now okay but you grab one of these and then you can go something called oh god i can't remember what it is i did all of these with this one as it in the crop and you can go uh is it the pixels there's a way of saving it in the, the thing i just can't remember exactly what it is now is it canvas canvas that's the one i think so if we go here and you go 800 it will change the other side automatically because you've locked the ratio okay and you go like that that's it and then we go menu we go save as okay you go as an image because you're saving it as a photo and then we're just going to put this on here and we're going to call that uh put some noughts behind it just so i can find it easy and we go save right and then we get rid of that uh, didn't we just save that one? Okay, uh, save. Okay, so it's down in there, that's fine. So there we go, browse, and then we go back to wherever it was. God, where did I save it? Can't remember now. Click access. There it is, that's that one there, and we go open. Now it uploads it. There we go. So there we go. So there we go. Before, that's what it was saying, the alert, but it was behind the thing, so you yeah. didn't see it. Okay, so you get okay so that picture's there and you go post and there it is it's up there simple as that and you won't lose any resolution from it just go going from stupidly 10 foot across down to 600 it's just the 600 because all it is it's under um uh 250 kilobytes per photo right and it's fine for the forum because literally i find 800 by 600 it is that size you won't have any problem with it at all big enough to see isn't it? it is big enough to see and you can see all your details and various yeah. things and it is very, very straightforward on that one. Yeah. So you can see that one. That's how you post them up from your computer, which is probably the easiest way of doing it. Okay, converting a hurricane. Uh, David says, uh, can you help me with some advice? I recently started building the FX 148 scale hurricane mark one tropical version. Uh, I do though want to go down the route of making it the Battle of Britain aircraft. The main build is relatively straightforward. The main difference is being the gun area over the wings. The tropical version has just openings on the leading edge uh, of the muzzles uh, were uh, nearly proud uh, to the openings. The other version I believe has the red type cloth covers over the gun ports. Uh, what you suggest is the best way of recreating this hopefully without uh, too much rescribing. Uh, I have already purchased the decals for the aircraft flown by Douglas Bader, uh, but haven't committed to it yet. I've watched your hurricane bill to inspire me. Keep up the great work. Um, to be honest, I would just drill out those guns that are in there then if they're up flush and then just put a red piece of decal over the top go through your spares box find a round door or something else like that and then cut that to shape and pop it over oh, just mask it and spray it yeah but it's tape it's like a cloth over the top they use a dope raised. linen they want to be raised it, not well yeah probably it's a bit like you know, i suppose modern day equipment would be using gaffer tape yeah. duct tape uh, but it was actually dope linen, I do believe. Was it? Uh, the reason for it is that it kept out crap and ice forming in the guns. Right, okay. It kept them nice and warm, stopped them freezing oh, right, when okay. the hurricane's at high altitude. The other thing is, right. well, is, um, as I say, you could tell if the gun didn't fire just by looking at it. Got and got a hole in it. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It on every... Yeah, every, every flight. Time, every time it, it came went, and got uh, rearmed, yeah, they put they a new put piece, piece of piece stuff on it. it. Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, okay. Yes. But apparently it, it was to stop the guns physically freezing at higher altitudes because obviously at higher altitudes, the guns would get so cold that it could freeze the mechanism. What about if you'd already the fired the gun you got 
uh, well, I don't know about that, but I assume it's probably quite toasty after firing, so it keeps it perhaps warmer. Just asking I don't know. It may be just, just where they were sat on the ground and cold, yeah. and then obviously high altitude, you get ice forming and stuff like that. Yeah. So I don't know. But I know that's what they used to say about them. But yeah, you could almost, I suppose, use um, Tamiya tape to paint thinking. over it, put a piece of that on, and yeah. then I'm go over it. So, yeah, I must admit, I always keep old decals and sometimes you get big things. Yeah, one-to-one <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, one -to -one scale. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I literally just cover over it. Usually they sort of, because I think it's like, I don't know if it's like dope limbing effect, like you see on biplanes, that type of material. It's a fabric it, on It is them. a fabric, you see. You yeah. Like the films, it's yeah, sort of the it. strands flats, are just... Yeah. It's definitely a fabric that they used over it. So, yeah, you could get away, I suppose, with just using Tamiya tape because it's slightly raised. It would be on the real thing. That's what I said. I thought about yeah. masking the square, yeah, and and painting over, over it, it instead of a decal, yeah, because that would be raised. Because obviously, you're getting the little build up with the yeah. paint, so I don't need to rescribe anything, do you? Because, like I say, it should sit over the top of, yeah, oh, okay. Uh, so oh, Gordon has said, uh, David, he's made his Hurricane 148 skiff for the Battle of Brock 1, the same way as Phil did his site. I remember that the tropical filter was included on the parts of the Sea Hurricane and all the bits. Yeah, we've discussed this before. Apparently, you can build it out of the box from that one anyway just don't come with the decals because it's got the trop filter and the normal and the arrestor hook bit and the normal so the for the sea hurricane you can build a mark one yeah and the trop yes because they're the only ones you can get yeah at the minute yes so there you go say, there's so, not much for you of an hurricane is there no, never sort of no there's not many versions did a lot with yeah, it i know obviously it. the trop filter and the arrestor hook but don't no, it was that no, much difference, so, really. Uh, saying the red decal simulating uh, the dope tape uh, uh -huh. to cover the things to stop blockages or icing on the guns uh, that were fired. Uh, there's some photos of the article. So there we go. Nice little thing of it down in there. there Don't get into the of the Spitfires were fairly standard throughout the Second World War. You so the gun crews knew if the guns had been fired and therefore required rearming. There you go. It's another one as well. Sorted. Today's a school day. Absolutely. See, you learn something new. Yeah. Okay, and I think... Deckling over decals. Deckling over decals. Uh, hi, Phil. I'm building... This is from Brian. The 148 Spitfire 43 uh, Squadron. Uh, markings the red letters with the white border. The decals are for, from Extra Decal and come in two sets. Uh, one white and then one has to be slightly over the other one. Okay, pretty straightforward. What I tend to do is obviously you put down the first one first, which is the white one. Put that down, um, set and sold it all into place, let it go down and then literally come in afterwards with the, the red one on top or whichever way around it is and then go through. If it's something quite small, like a rondel, as now we're calling them, okay, if it's just something like the dot in the middle, I might do that at the same time. But if it's something big and quite complex that you've got to line up, you know, with a nice board around it, I might do them as two separates. I was going to say, would you let the first one yeah, dry, dry, you know, off, dry totally. off totally and then put and them then come in the, the second one in open? If it's something like you lettering, because you want it to be the same distances all the way yeah. around and trying to get it all the same, and then you say you're rolling over it and you nudge it <laughs> or it might yeah. tear it, and yeah, it's not worth doing it. If it's something like, you know, you should say like that. I might be inclined to say, okay, because some of these, let's face it, they just leave like the, the red dot out to get yeah. around copyright issues. Yeah. I'll pop that down, put the dot in the middle and just roll over the lot and then just place it down. I won't worry. But if it's something complex, I remember doing the Russian one and on the stars and it has that border, yes. that blue. Yeah, I did them as separate because trying to do them as one, I tried it with one, it just didn't work. I couldn't yeah, get I it to sit properly. It's easy yeah. to have that base down and then come in with a second one over the top. So yeah, see, advice would be, unless you're me, I'm rushing it, but normally <laughs> use it as two completely separate decals. Put the first one down, get that one down, let that one dry. I've come back the next day, put the top part of it onto it, and treat them as two completely separate decals to get the line up right. And that way you'll have less hassle. Because that way, if you wreck one, you've only wrecked one instead yeah. of doing two in one with yeah, that particular yeah. one. And I think that is it. I think that's up to it. Oh, hold on, modeling template. Last one in through the door, quick one. Uh, one of your videos or a motling template. Can you post up the name where you got it? Hands. Oh, look, 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 look. Uh, you mean these lovely paddies? Absolutely forever. They do come in a pack of three, so they said. Um, so it's these, which are mottling templates. So 32nd, 48th, 72nd, you can do it. And the wavy line for the bottoms, which I use for everything. Um, and go through it like that. But these were made by. 
what they call themselves, Airwaves. 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 Airwaves Edge. Yes, there you go. Hold on, we've got a link, sorry. One of the guys has come to my rescue. Come on. There we go. There you go. That's it. Mottling set. That's the one you want. There you go. Yep, we'll go. Sorry, we're in the trade section. What was I <sighs> Sorry, hold on. We'll edit, so, edit that bit we'll out. Edit that bit out, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> there you go, try it again. There we go. That's actually, I think, that's not mine. Which is the one I have? No, they do do different ones, yeah, they do different no, ones for different things. At the time, I think I just did, had the, oh look, look, they do loads of, that's what I had, there's mine. So which is? Blotch Small Mottle Mask set. Yes, that's the one, isn't it? Yeah, that looks like the one that, you've got. That's it, that's mine, that's the one I've got. Yeah. But again, you've got, oh my lord, lots of blotches. I can see the one doing for the Italian. Yes, that's a real... Because that's yeah, just a... horrendous <laughs> job, that one. Yeah, you've got to be pretty nifty with an airbrush to pull that one off. Yes. I suppose that Japanese one, you know what they do on the high end? Yeah, yeah. Because that's a bit... A bit, yeah, light. detailed. Yeah, be, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. And there we go. Cheers for that, mate. No problem. Lovely job. Right, we will be back with you in, uh, well, depending on when you're watching this, clearly, but we'll be back at 7.30 for the live auction tonight. Lovely to have you on, as always. Get as many as you in there. Get bidding. Yes. Get yourself a bargain. Yes. And we've got some fixed price stuff as well. Yes, we have, yeah. So we've got some fixed price yeah, specials. Not many, but not many just well, a handful. Just handful. But just yeah. the silly prices. Take them off our hands and yeah. they're gone. No yeah. problem with that at all. Yeah. There we go. Sorted. Brilliant. Right, that'll do it from us. Happy modelling. Take care. We'll catch you all tomorrow. Bye.